We're here at Myeloma 2018, and we just completed a session on drug resistance. And I'm joined by my colleagues, uh, Brian Van Ness, Anya Seckinger, and Florian Bosterman. And we're going to talk a little bit about drug resistance and overcoming drug resistance. So, Brian, you want to get us started on, uh, on proteasome inhibitor resistance. Okay, so in proteasome inhibitor resistance, obviously one of the problems that we're, we're faced with is not every patient responds, uh, and many of the patients do, that do respond oftentimes relapse uh, and fail to respond after that. So our approach on this has to been to try to model genetics to identify gene expression patterns that will distinguish a responding myeloma from a non-responding myeloma using laboratory models and then to try to apply those to the clinic to see if they are effective in stratifying patients. The other problem in myeloma obviously is the subpopulations and using some of these strategies we've been able to identify signatures of resistance in subpopulations which we're continuing to monitor to see if they in fact are growing out in relapses in patients. Yeah, really interesting. And, and I think, you know, one of the things we'll come to as we get through each of you briefly is since we combine many drugs together, how do you apply this concept of individual drug resistance to combination therapy? Um, Florian, you want to talk to us a little bit about your new models in terms of imid resistance? Right. So uh, what we found is that um, as a mechanism of how imids work um, is that they outcompete a function of this protein called cerebron. Um, which um, acts as a chaperone on cell surface proteins such as LAT1, CD147, and MCT1. Um, and by that activity, their uh, maturation of folding is inhibited. Um, they cannot be activated and are ultimately removed by the unfolded protein response. Uh, and what we see in the refractory, imid refractory situation is that these proteins are not removed anymore upon imid treatment, though they in our belief, the, uh, the mechanism of resistance lies in what stabilizes these proteins in the imid context in the refractory situation. Yeah, really, really very interesting and new potential targets for overcoming drug resistance with the imids. So Anya, your study talked a little bit about CD38 resistance in newly diagnosed patients and some in the relapse as well. Do you want to talk us through some of what your findings were? Well, uh, maybe I can start with uh, that it's at first uh, look, um, it seems maybe a bit stupid to look for expression of CD38 because it's of course long known that it's expressed on myeloma cells. However, when we uh, designed a clinical trial for high risk uh, newly diagnosed myeloma patients, uh, including an anti CD38 antibody, we found that only little information is uh, uh, available regarding this. So that's why we did the analysis and uh, basically we found that uh, indeed CD38 is expressed in also newly diagnosed uh, myeloma patients but with quite some difference regarding uh, the expression level. And if we look at, uh, for example, cytogenetic risk factors or also gene expression based uh, risk factors, we found uh, some also significant differences, but in the end these were rather low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think what's really interesting is each of your three topics represent sort of the backbone of myeloma therapy. Each class is one that was not identified through mutations or other cancer biology approaches, but really are consistent with plasma cell approaches. My argument for years has been you just put them all together. Why, why do you think each of your potential resistance mechanisms would, would counter, counteract that idea? Brian, why don't we start with you? Well, I think although we're identifying factors that, that in, impact resistance to proteasome inhibitors, we've applied some of these signatures even to combination trials. Mm -hmm. And if you remove bortezomib effectiveness from a combination trial, it's still an important outcome that might affect total response. Mm -hmm. And we've done that and shown that our predictions of response in bortezomib only trials when applied to trials that have combinations are still reasonably stratifying patients in terms of poor or good response. So I think some of the dominant factors that, that might influence uh, proteasome inhibitor response are still going to be worth examining even in combination trials. Okay, and how about the IMIDs? Would you say there's a group of patients that you wouldn't treat with an IMID as part of their initial therapy? Well, what we have so far is um, a dynamic marker. So if you observe very early on destabilization of our 
of the mentioned cell surface proteins, um, which are mostly metabolic cell surface proteins, you will um, be able to predict um, response very early on. But there is no pretreatment marker which we can derive from that at the moment. But one other issue I want to indicate in that regard is, um, name, be it IMIDS, be it the mechanism I described previously, those are all post-translational mechanisms which appear to have a highly relevant pathophysiological um, relevance in multiple myeloma. And that will probably not be amenable only to genomics. Mm -hmm. So I think we have a disease where we really have to combine omics, uh, multi-omics, in order to really understand both the pathophysiology, but also new treatment approaches and uh, resistance mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I need to get back to your work. CD38 is expressed on all myeloma cells. So, would there be a patient you would say should not get DARA, particularly in the newly diagnosed setting? So, from the expression analysis, the short answer is no. So, as we found expression in in all myeloma patients, also at early stages, and uh, including. Uh, also patients with AL amyloidosis, uh, my short answer is uh, no. And as we uh, could also inc uh, exclude uh, alternative splicing as a potential resistance mechanism, at least upfront, so I would mm, treat uh, in the end every patient. Okay, great. Well, really interesting data, and we look forward to practical applications and clinical applications of this in the near future. Thank you very much.